So let us talk about embedded systems today. What are embedded systems? Embedded system is a computer system with a dedicated function within a larger mechanical or electrical system. So there is a system in which an embedded system has a specific function, often with real-time computing constraint. This is very important. We are going to discuss this in quite detail. So it is embedded as part of complete device, often including hardware and mechanical parts. So embedded system controls many devices in common use today. 98% of all microprocessors being manufactured are used in embedded systems. Then an embedded system again is a special purpose computer that is used inside of a device. So there is another definition, special purpose computer inside a device or a combination of hardware and software that forms the component of a larger system. For example, you might be having many things in this list. All these have embedded systems like air conditioner, ATM machine, battery charger, digital camera, DVD player, fax machine, home security system, mobile phone, modem, or talk about navigation system, PDA, photocopier, printer, router, scanner, TV, or video game, or variable computer. All these have, and these applications have embedded systems, embedded uh, technology. Now, let us start with the history. In the earliest years of computers in 1930 and 40s, computers were sometimes dedicated to a single purpose task, just a single task. So one of the first recognizably modern embedded systems was the Apollo Guidance Computer, developed by Charles Stock Draper at the MIT. Since these early applications in 1960s, embedded systems have come down in price and there had been a dramatic rise in processing power and functionality. So the first microprocessor, for example, the Intel 4004 was designed for calculators and other small systems but still required many external memory and support chips. So by the mid 1980s, most of the common previously external system components had been integrated into same chip as the processor. And this modern form of microcontroller allowed an even more widespread use, which by the end of the decade were the norm rather than the exception for almost all electronic devices. So what are the characteristics of embedded systems? First of all, they are special purpose, means they are typically designed to execute a single program repeatedly, like in washing machine. You know, you have seen your machine to work exactly like it, once, twice or number of times. This is special purpose. So it is used to be single purpose, not multi-function, but single purpose, tactic and strategy. Then the second characteristic is they are tightly constrained. That is low cost, simple systems, fewer components based, perform function fast enough and use minimum power. The third characteristic is reactive and real-time. So reactive means continually reacts to external events and real-time means must compute certain result in real-time. So no post-processing, real-time. Then comes the hardware and software way which coexist. So the software written for an embedded system is often called firmware. This is very important. The software written for embedded system is often called a firmware. Uh, this is stored in a ROM, read-only memory or flash memory chips rather than a disk device or disk drive. So let us, uh, you know, summarize the components of the embedded system. First of all, we have embedded hardware. So this is mainly consisting of microcontroller with various peripheral ICs, integrated circuits. Then we have embedded RTOs, that is, uh, you know, real-time operating systems or RTOs, real-time operating 
All intelligent devices that perform complex functions have an embedded operating system inside. Then we have a device driver, the software that acts as a glue between the OS and the peripheral device, which is called the device driver. Then comes uh, the communication stacks. If the embedded device is capable of communicating to the external world, it has to have a communication software stack running on the top of the operating system OS. Then the embedded application. This is the application which performs the predefined function for on off the embedded device. This is just an example of uh, or, or picture taken from Wikipedia. This is picture of the internals of an ADSL modem router. A modern example of an embedded system labeled part includes the microprocessor. This is the microprocessor. This is the RAM and a flash memory. So what is the difference from usual computer programs if we talk about architectural and design? Then several components of vastly different functionalities are found in embedded system software and respond the time constraint and there are deadlines are very strict. So all components must use the same memory or memory optimally. Not same but optimal memory. And what are the differences from usual computer programs? Each software component execution speed must be optimal. This is very important. And software must have control complexity and must be thoroughly tested and debugged for the errors. Then comes the real-time programming. Programming the process or instruction set with constraint of time. The constraint of time is real-time programming. For its response, process with uh, latencies, least latencies and the process with deadlines. So the procedure oriented like language like C and object oriented C++ and Java language are used in most embedded system programming. Embedded programming is such that methods to optimize the system memory requirements are also employed and used. So RTOS is an IOS operating system for response time control and even control process. So it is very essential for large scale embedded systems. The function of RTOS is basic OS functions, RTOS main functions, time management, predictability, priorities management, IPC, interprocess, um, you know, synchronization, communication, time slicing, hard and soft, will keep it operability. So when do we need this RTOS? Software for a large number of small scale embedded system use no RTOS and these functions are incorporated into the application software. For small scale systems, RTOS function can be replaced by simple C. For example, instead of the memory or equation and de regression function of RTOS, the C function malloc and free can be used. Software can directly handle IPC interprocess communication. Uh, but why this is essential uh, when a common and effective way of handling uh, of the hardware source calls from the internet, you need RTOS. IO management with devices, files, mailboxes becomes simple using an RTOS and effectively scheduling or uh, effective scheduling and running and uh, blocking of the task in cases of many tasks. So in conclusion, uh, as far as RTO is concerned, RTOS may not be necessary in small scale embedded systems and RTOS is very necessary when uh, less scheduling of multiple processes and devices becomes important. Then the user interface. Embedded system range from no user interface at all, dedicated only to one task, to the full user interface similar to the desktop operating system in devices such as this is PDAs. So, you know, it varies depend on the applications. Let us have a comparison of various software architecture, round robin, round robin with interrupts, function queue scheduling and RTOS. So the RTOS, which right now we are talking about, uh, as far as priorities available, worst response time for task code, stability of response when the code changes and simplicity is concerned. RTOS interrupts returns and priority orders. This worst response time for task code is zero plus execution time for the routines. The stability of responses when this code changes is very good and simplicity, okay, more complex. While others, because these are, you know, 
customary uh, software architectures so we can have a comparison like this this is the tool chain for embedded software these are cc++ files there is a cross compiler there the object file it may be in any format then we have assembly files target assembly language this is again a cross assembler then we have object file and these two have linkers and locators or loaders the executable file is made and then the target system this goes to the target system run on the target system this is the host where it is prepared so what are the challenges as far as the embedded systems are concerned there has to be a precise engineering and design it has to be low in cost it has to have a high performance and chip selection is very has to be very careful it should be efficient so in short the challenge is to provide affordable highly integrated devices meeting stringent requirements for safety security reliability availability and at the time same time keeping the cost low so there are again certain embedded application which i want to emphasize may be your digital camera dvd you know recorder set top box printer should all have their embedded applications there are various application areas see and all have their shares all have their shares may be uh, home appliances factory automation or any other it is used everywhere so in conclusion the world of the embedded system is a dreamer's paradise with unlimited possibilities it may controlling all the systems around just by simple gesture and the things responds to you as if it was some magic as microprocessors are becoming smaller and cheaper more and more products are becoming smart microprocessor embedded in them thank you so much take care of yourself mm -hmm.